good people and welcome to Finder Skills Hub. Here we learn, we connect, and we grow. One of the important tools in Microsoft Excel is Goal Seek. For those who have used it, it allows you to get the needed input if you want to calculate towards a desired result. Okay, so in an example that we are going to use, we have salary increments for staff. We already know how much they want to take home but when we bring in taxes we have to work backwards to get the taxable value in typical goal seek you can only do this for one staff but in this video i'm going to show you how you can run goal seek for multiple staff records in a table so if you are game join me in excel and let's get started okay so in an earlier video we shared this payroll template with you so it is for Ghana's pay as you earn, income tax as we know it. So we have staff name, grade, all the figures in blue, you can change them. Then we have gross salary, okay, which is an addition of your basic pay and allowances if you have. Then we take up the statutory deductions, which is social security, provident fund if you have, to get our taxable salary. Then based on this taxable salary, which is in column J, we calculate our pay as you earn. Now this is feeding on the table in the other sheet I'm going to show you shortly. In their loan payment salary advance and those optional deductions, you do it before the staff gets the net salary. Okay, so basically it ends at net salary, then other deductions will follow. What we want to do is, let's say it's a new year and you want to review new salaries for your staff. You already have some projections. So example, for this staff who is currently earning 8,000, you want to give him maybe 10,000 to take home. But that 10,000 would be derived after a series of calculations. We can use goal seek to determine that. So let's see how to get this done. If I come to the tax table, you notice this is the tax table for Gara's current pay as you end schedule is yet to be updated. So we are doing this in 2025. So if it is updated, typically it is these thresholds, the blue numbers, that is the chargeable rates and the corresponding rates that are updated. Once you update this side of the table, you can get the calculations easily, right? Now, what we've done here is we've simulated how much each staff will pay on the taxable. So as an example, if I do 5,000 here, the staff is going to pay 848, right? I tested this with the original GRA, or Ghana Revenue Authority template. Right? This is the monthly template that you are required to fill in. So for a basic salary of 5291, you take off the SNETs, which is a statutory deduction, right? If you run through the template, your taxable is actually 5000. Okay, so on this, your tax deductible is 848.50 which is similar to what we have here. Right. So this is the current PAYE. So now we want to give this stuff 10,000, right? Instead of 8,845. So what we want to do is just simulate, right? Now, to make this easier, what I'm going to do is I want to take these headers, basic pay, cash allowance, cost salary, employee, and all those things that come before your PAYE. So I'm going to copy this and then I'll come to my tax table and I'm going to paste this here. So I'll transpose it. So Control Alt V brings up the paste special dialog box. I can choose transpose and paste values. Okay. So this gives me something like, okay, so I've pasted values because I want us to go through the calculations just to be sure which ones are inputs and which ones are calculations. Okay. So in the end we had 11259. Now, basically, for modeling, we need to let the user know which cells are input. So, normally, they are in blue. So, if I have my basic pay and my cash allowance, then we have the total here. So, this plus this gives me 12,977. So, this is my first calculation. Okay, so from here, I'm going to take off my 5.5 .5 statutory deduction for SNETs. So on basic pay, I've multiplied 5.5%. .5%. Okay, 
Okay, so that gives me 609. Then in some cases, there's an optional provident fund deduction, which we can also take from here. So I'll take off another 10%. So that gives me this. So in effect, my taxable salary is going to be the gross salary minus this minus that. Okay, which brings us to where we started from. I'm doing this because I want you to appreciate the fact that if you want to use goal seek, you should have an existing calculation model in place. Okay, so your inputs, your outputs, then you will use that to determine the input required to get that desired result. So at this point, I'm going to calculate my PAYA. Okay, so let me just put in the PAYA formula. Earlier, you can refer to the video, we shared the link. So in that video, we gave you a detailed walkthrough of how to calculate this PAY. But a quick recap is the fact that we use some products, okay? Now, we've already put the thresholds and the corresponding rates in this table, right? So if I use some products, I'm taking this taxable, which is in K20, and then comparing it to the cumulative values here, okay? We've already put a named range here, so I'm comparing it to all the numbers that are in this range. That's the first level. Then I'll take the same value comma and then subtract the same threshold, which is the cumulative. So again, we've named that range. You could also select it if you like. Okay. And then finally, we bring a comma, compare it or multiply it through the differential rates, which again, we've named here. Okay. So that is our simple formula. So if you use some products, the taxable, which is K20, compared to the cumulative comma, the same taxable, we subtract the thresholds or the cumulative thresholds from it. Then we multiply through, through the differential rates, which is named here. Now, before you press enter, what you need to do is we need to force this to return numeric values. Okay. So for this comparison, you just hold this in brackets, okay, and then you put in two minus signs. So this double minus is to force this equation to give us a value one or zero, okay. So that is the simple formula here. So when you press enter, we should get the 2413, which is currently the tax that the staff is paying. Let's check and be sure. So it's 2413.33, okay. So at this point, we can now determine the net salary, which is going to be this minus that, right. So this is our existing model. Now we want to simulate and push for 10,000, okay. So for goal seek, it's pretty simple. We start with the cell that we want to change, okay. So we want 8,000 to change to 10,000. That's where we stand. So we come to data, right? Then we come to what if analysis. Then we go to goal seek. So these are the three inputs required. The cell we are setting to a new value. That's where I'm starting from. Okay. To what value? This is an input. So we are putting 10,000 here. By changing what cell? Something has to give. Okay. So the basic pay is going to go up in this case. In this case, we are assuming that cash allowance is going to be the same. Okay. These are two variables we could change, but we are just changing the basic pay. Okay. So we set this to 10,000 by changing the basic pay and then we click OK. So you notice that it runs this and then gives us a new basic pay of 12,905, which gives us a net salary of 10,000. Okay. So you can do this for one stuff, but assuming you have 20. You can't simulate this for 20. So we need to now find a way to do the same thing this time on inside the table so that on just one click, you can just run the new values. So let's see how to do this. Now we'll use a simple VBA code. I mean, I know most of you are not code people, but there's a very simple copy and paste. Just click and run and then you are good. Okay. So let's come to the table and then make the changes. So this is our current net salary. Again, it is linked. So the formula runs through. So what I'm basically going to do is insert a new column. Okay. And then call this new 
salaries. So for our guy here, he already is getting 10,000. Okay. So for this new salary, how much PAY should he pay? So to make this easier, I'm going to round up the rest of the calculations. So I'm going to use the round up function. Okay. Take this number and then we round it up to minus three. Okay. So that will take us to the next thousand. Okay. So this is 2000. If I copy this down, 7,000 and so on. Okay. For the purpose of this, I'm going to copy and paste the values. Control shift V. The idea is that for these new salaries, you have to input them. Okay. So that is going to be our target. So for the new salaries, we want to find out what the basic pay should be. And then it will run through and then give us our PAY. So this is the code. I'm going to explain it so that you know how to change it in your case. Okay. So what we have here is we are going to declare a variable. Okay. So that is going to be X. It can be any letter. We are declaring this as an integer. Now for X, X currently refers to the number of rows we have in our table. So if you look at my table, it starts from row 12 and goes all the way to row 34. So if you have more than that, you can adjust. But the first record starts in row 12 and it goes all the way to 34. Now, for our goal seek, you remember when we're doing it for the single value, this is what we wanted to change. Okay, the net salary. So that is column P at the moment. So column P is set here as the goal seek column in this case. Right. Now, we want to set it to column Q. So our target value is column Q. So that is set here as the goal. Okay. So this is the goal. So we set it here to variable X. In this case, S is taking the character column Q. Okay. So Q12, Q13 and so on. Okay. Then the changing cell, in this case, the changing column is going to be column E. Why column E? Because it's basic pay that we are changing. Okay, so the three columns we are using, P, which is going to change, Q, our target value, that is the new salary, and then we are changing column E. Okay, then our range is from row 12 to row 34. Okay, so now that you understand this simple code, all you need to do is copy this. Okay, so once you copy it, we are going to insert it as a macro and assign it to a button. So that button, when you click on it, it's going to use the parameters you've set and then run the go seek for all the records. Okay, so let's do this. You go to the developer tab. If you don't have the developer tab, you can easily activate it. Go to any of the existing tabs, right click, go to customize the ribbon. Okay. And to your right, you see the option to activate the developer tab. If you don't have the developer tab, you could also insert a new macro under the view tab. Okay. So you have macros here. Okay. But I prefer the developer tab because we want to insert a button that we'll click on to run this. Now that we've understood the code, I've put it in here so you can copy it. Right. You have some invisible characters in here. So what I would normally advise is when you copy, you can put you can paste it in a notepad. Okay. So notepad would make it easier to remove all those texts. Of course, what we could have done was to type this in one line, in one statement, remove the underscore, but I wanted you to understand this. That's why I broke it into the three inputs. Okay. So cells, goals, and then the changing cell, but you could also remove the underscore and then write that whole line together. Okay. So copy, paste it in the notepad. Okay. Then copy that version. Control C. Okay. So at this point, you need to paste it in the button that is enabled by a macro. So when you click the button, it runs it automatically. You can do that under the developer tab. Then you go to insert. We are inserting this form control button, right? When you click on this, it allows you to draw the shape. 
So this is going to be the button to click to trigger it. You can give it any name. So let's say run new salaries, right? No space. Okay. So this is going to be the name of the macro and I'll click on new. So all I need to do now is paste what I copied between sub and end. Okay. So I'm going to paste this here. Okay. So you realize that it doesn't give me any error. So I'm going to close this so that we test and see if this is working. So now that we have this, let's test if what we have done is correct. It should now update net salary to the new salary and then change the basic pay. Okay. So look out for these numbers. So let's click on this run. So you realize that it has now matched P to Q. Okay. And our new PAYU rates are here. And then we now have 12,905 as we had it earlier. Okay. So you could keep this as a side template. And when you have to renew salaries and all that, you basically come in here. So I can change just a single person, 20,000. And then I can run. Okay. So it goes to 20,000. PAYU goes up. And then my basic pay also goes up. If you like, you can edit this button, edit text, okay. Click here to run, okay. So it's easy for your user to run. You may have to save this as an SLSM file, macro enabled file in subsequent ones to make it easier for you. So when you are saving us, okay, you save us instead of SLS, X, you choose SLSM, okay, as a macro enabled file, and you can save this for your subsequent run. Okay, so we'll share the final file with you so that you can use it and make your own changes. Hope you learned something. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining us. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number will add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.